Welcome everyone to GamerMelt. Before we get into some insane overclocks, check out today's sponsor, Drop. Formerly known as MassDrop, a group buy website with amazing deals on PC hardware. It's free to sign up and if you do it today, you'll get $20 off your first drop made items. So head to the link in the description below. Over the last few days, reviews for custom RX 5700 XT GPUs have slowly been coming out, but so far they've mostly just been slightly upgraded models. I'm talking dual fan though, not a blower style, so definitely much quieter and cooler than reference, but not triple fan, and definitely not running the power play mod. That is, until now. PowerColor actually sent me their newest Red Devil RX 5700 XT, and over the past couple days I've been putting it through its paces to see just how high I could push it. So first a quick thank you to PowerColor for sending me this beast of a GPU, and second, this isn't so much of a review as it is me just trying to get the craziest overclock ever. But if you're interested in something like that, let me know down in the comments below. To quickly go over specs, the Red Devil 5700 XT is a new design for PowerColor, and I definitely think it's their best looking card yet. There's no red other than some stickers on the fans and it has nice RGB LED accents. The card itself is a 2.5 slot design, comes with 3 90mm fans and a 10 phase VRM design. It comes with a base clock of 1770MHz, a boost of 2010, and a gaming clock of 1905, which is what you can expect to get stock while gaming. Ok, with all of that out of the way, let's get to the part we all care about, performance and overclocking. When I first got the card, I wanted to quickly jump into things, so I set it to an auto overclocking global wattman which got it to 2130 MHz. That was a little disappointing because it's exactly what my reference card got. With that said, it was definitely much quieter. I'll leave those tests for a possible review, but just based on me listening, there's a massive difference. After running just a few benchmarks, I turned everything to manual and began slowly cranking settings up and testing, only to readjust, until pretty quickly I learned that I could easily crank the maximum overclock all the way up. Not only that, but I was maxing out my memory overclock at 950 MHz, something that was impossible when I first tested AMD's reference cards, though I will say that when I retested the reference 5700 XT it could max it out as well, so it definitely was a software issue. I didn't run any benchmarks with it there, but before it couldn't even get a 20 MHz overclock. Back over to the power color, it became pretty clear that I was hitting a virtual wall. Sure, I wasn't actually getting clocks that reached the maximum 2150 MHz, but at nearly any clock you set it to, the actual clocks you get tend to be a good bit lower. So I decided to do the power play mod. Now before I get into it, make sure to stay until the end where I discuss the drawbacks to this. Anyway, you may have heard of the PowerPlay mod from Vega, or more recently when Igor's lab used it on a water-cooled RX 5700 XT. It's basically a registry mod that changes the limits AMD has set for the clock's power and memory. And I'll honestly say that I'm not sure why they have it set so low for the 5700 XT to begin with. The GPU itself can do at least a little bit more. Anyway, I wasn't expecting to get much out of this, maybe another 20 MHz or something like that. Well, let's just say I was shocked. After a good bit of testing, I was able to set the maximum clock to 2200 MHz with a 930 MHz memory overclock and a 70% power increase. At 2300 MHz, things would crash pretty fast, and while I had the memory as high as 960 MHz at first, some games I tested caused a green screen. Eventually I even had to knock it down to 920 MHz. With that said, once I set the clock to 2.2 GHz, I maintained about 2100 MHz throughout most of my benchmarks, and at one point AMD's Wattman software actually picked up a quick spike that got nearly 2.3 GHz. Now I honestly don't know when that happened because I just saw it after multiple tests, but you can see that it happened again here. Of course, I don't know how either of these spikes happened to begin with because I had it set in Wattman for a much lower max frequency. Still, it apparently did unless the software messed up. One thing that was funny was after installing the mod, I ran an auto overclock just to see what Wattman thought it should be now, and it actually suggested 2280 megahertz. Unfortunately, it did crash with that, but still pretty funny. Either way, at that around 2100 megahertz, there was a couple FPS difference in most games. 3D Mark's Time Spike graphics score went up to 9251, which isn't even 2% higher than the auto overclock score. But there is a pretty big difference when comparing scores to the reference 5700 XT. The biggest jump in performance was probably the average FPS in F1 2018, which got over 9% more frames than the auto overclock. What's wild is that it did all this while staying around 65 degrees, though it did get pretty power hungry with a maximum power draw of 282 watts. 
And this finally brings me to my conclusion. It's pretty clear that there's more headroom beyond what AMD said is the limit, at least when it comes to custom Beastly cards like the PowerColor Red Devil 5700 XT. With that said, while it's nice to get those extra FPS, there were still some stability issues from time to time, and after a while, the clock seemed to not get as high as before. Basically, what I went over is the best case scenario, and yeah, I probably could have tweaked something here or there, but for most users, it's just not worth it. The fan speed definitely got quite a bit higher, but then again I did set my profile to ridiculous levels. I will say do not expect to really get 2.3 GHz at all. That was likely just some crazy fluke, but hey, it happened, and 2100 MHz certainly isn't bad. For those who are interested, the Red Devil 5700 XT comes in two versions, the limited edition that comes with an RGB mousepad for $449 or the standard for $439. You can pick one up at the affiliate link in the description below. So while that does it for today, let me know what your favorite RX 5700 XT is down in the comments. And if you liked the video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And as always, have a great day.